I was reflecting on the word power as I was prepping to stand on this stage. And as most millennials would, I typed into Google power on Broadway and Arvind Ethan David's talk from 2019 popped up. In his talk, he shared that one of the many reasons we lack authentic, diverse representation in producers of power is because at our producing tables, in order to be a producer in commercial theater, you kind of need to have access to large sums of money from individual investors. Therefore, producers that generally have that access generally come from the same socioeconomic background. Therefore, in order to be a Broadway producer, you kind of need to be rich yourself or in proximity to wealth. Arvind ended his talk by sharing that, in fact, there are a bunch of diverse and ambitious producers who are not waiting for an invitation. And he's kind of right. In his talk, I heard a challenge. A challenge to those in our community, in power, and to ourselves. How do we expand the way our multi-million dollar productions come together? Who gets the chance to invest? Who gets invited? In short, how do we operate from a mindset of abundance rather than scarcity? In unison, this group said, Arbind, challenge accepted. But before I go any further, I wanna share that I love the theater community. I knew that I was called to participate in this art form before I even knew what a producer was. Uh, I'm a West Coast kid, born and raised in Los Angeles, and all of my artistic influences began with my family. They taught me the art of the gathering, or any other excuse to whip out a piñata. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Growing up, our living room was essentially a multi-purpose living room and with lots of music. Of course, with a side of chisme. My dad was my first artistic collaborator and accompanist. Yes, he even played for my very first audition at age eight. Most family gatherings ended with jam sessions with my dad on keys, I was on vocals, my one brother on guitar, my other brother on congas, my mom and sister as the backup singers, and anybody else who was in the room was not only encouraged to participate, but was likely handed an instrument and given a solo. You were lucky if you got the cowbell. <laughs> These jam sessions were born from a place of abundance. Every individual in the room, uh, musically talented or not, was offered a spot in the band. Fast forward to my first time uh, working on Broadway, and I started to experience the feeling of scarcity. My first time uh, raising money for a Broadway show, I was not only told, you don't see many Lopez's above the title, but I saw it in the playbills. I felt it. I lived it. On one hand, I was incredibly grateful to be working on Broadway and to be, you know, have that privilege to be in the room where it happens, uh, see how that sausage gets made. But, but on the other hand, I lost that mindset of abundance, what my dad, my first artistic collaborator, taught me. Working on Broadway, I saw how scarcity infiltrated our producing teams, our inherited contracts from the 1980s our fundraising strategies, our audience building. And even though things were changing on the stage, what didn't change was who was getting the opportunity to invest. It reminded me of my introduction to artistic communities. What if Broadway was like a Lopez family jam session? where you didn't have to have an invite to get into the room or get offered an instrument, let alone get a solo. In July of 2020, I found myself in a Zoom room with seven other producers of color. After working on Broadway for seven years, this moment was a first for me. I looked at this beautiful Zoom screen of exciting and innovative producers, and most of which I was meeting for the first time. The eight of us not only aligned as theater makers, as commercial producers, but we aligned in our values. Quickly, we built a Zoom room 
that led with grace. And as producers, naturally, we left the Zoom room with action items. One of our very first tasks as a group was to collect data for the 2018-2019 APAC visibility report. We were really excited to be a part of this because this is the first year that they were including co-producer and producer data. And so we were excited to be helpful in uncovering what this was, which led to the not so shocking result. 93.6% of the producers in the 2018-2019 season on Broadway identified as white. Once again, this icky word of scarcity starts popping back into the question. But this data made us hungry to respond to the data. How can we create an answer to the problem we just discovered? Before I go any further, uh, I wanna just give you a quick general breakdown of producing on Broadway. So you've got the lead producers, or basically the CEO, and they manage the limited liability company. All of our shows on Broadway are LLCs, and these LLCs kind of operate as mini startup companies. And all of them are built differently because each have very specific needs that respond to the very specific needs of that show. Uh, here's a snapshot of something that might look a little more familiar to you. It's the top part of the Playbill title page, yeah. Um, and in this case, it's the Lopez Family Jam Session Show. Um, typically, the first name, or in this case, the matriarch of my family, Abuelita, she is the lead producer, she's the CEO. Next, you have uh, the co-producers. And in this case, they're my immediate family. And the co-producers are invited by the lead producer. And they make up this beautiful paragraph of theater believers. Each of these believers raises a portion of the lead producer's share. And that threshold has historically been around, or started around $200,000. And finally, we have the investors. The investors are invited by the co-producers to participate financially and support the show. On Broadway, investors must be accredited by SEC guidelines. Given the scale of our productions, the minimum investment is often around $25,000. These are legal guidelines. Accreditation assures us that these individuals are high net worth and have the means to lose all their money. <laughs> and this is where this process brings me pause. I keep thinking about power and how, as producers, we need to get a lot of money in order to make our shows happen. And this is where individuals with money gain a lot of power on Broadway. So by really asking how do we create access for folks who have not been traditionally introduced to producing and investing systems, this led us to the creation of the Industry Standard Group, TISG. Our goal is to diversify that uh, beautiful title page that you see in the playbill uh, by creating access for more black, indigenous, people of color, and folks from all socioeconomic backgrounds. How do we operate from a place of abundance? So we jump from the Zoom screen to real life activation. We are actively addressing Arvind's challenge he shared in 2019 by introducing a new financial tool that will allow for many non-accredited investors to participate as stakeholders in multiple Broadway shows that are mission aligned with TISG. After two years of working with our incredible legal team and, and dissecting the Securities Exchange Commission, AKA our new BFFs, the SEC, we've um, really been able to uncover Regulation D and see the exciting new opportunities within an offering with Regulation CF. Working within the complicated legal structures of America, we've found a way to make this work legally and feasibly. And by lowering this financial threshold to $25,000, below the $25,000 price tag, we're able to support our first-time investors by providing professional development pipelines and not just invite new stakeholders to the table, but provide them with community and guidelines and mentorship and resources to support them once they are at the table. In short, 
TISG will operate as your not so average co-producers. And we've already identified lead producers who are willing to bring accountability to their producing practices and make a meaningful place for us at their tables. Now, I recognize that this is just one new tool that we're introducing to this very complicated economic breakdown of Broadway, but we have to start somewhere. We truly believe that by opening the door to who gets to invest in our stories, will only bring more authenticity to our stories. We're eager to invite folks who have never seen themselves as a producer before, uh, inviting actors or stagehands or front of house staff, people who have dedicated their lives to this industry without ever seeing a stake in the business because of its intentional and unintentional exclusivity. I think about the times in the Lopez Family Jam session where uh, a barrier didn't exist to get invited into the room, a barrier didn't exist to get offered an instrument and a space to play and grow in community. The powerful gift of being invited and acknowledged in the room. Your invitation is a powerful gift. It builds relationship, which I believe to be the strongest currency of life. And if you think you already had given your invitation, just ask again. And yes, I'm talking about something much bigger than a paperless post invite. <laughs> Who knew that uh, Google searching power on Broadway would lead me on this journey to discover my own definition? Power on Broadway is the power of the invitation. It allows us to reflect on the own barriers to entry we build in our own lives and how we share our power in every single room that we enter. So our Vince challenge that he shared back in 2019, it still bears thinking about, talking about, and dreaming about. And now, this is your invitation to create the industry we want to rebuild together and grow in abundance. Thank you.